AZ900 is one of the most sought after cloud certification and if you are also targeting Azure as your career option, this certification can give you the needed jump start. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. In this part 22, we are going to cover 20 questions on many different Azure concepts which are constantly repeated in AZ900 exams. And I just mentioned this is part 22. So until now we have already covered 400 questions on AZ900. So if your exam is just around the corner, then please do not miss to watch all these 400 plus questions to make sure that you ace the exam. And to further assist you in your learning, I have a free PDF file for you containing all the questions and the answers for both part 21 and 22. Similarly, you can get the free PDF files for all our previous parts. Now let's directly jump in and prepare for AZ900 exam. So let's begin today's learning with question number 401. It says Azure Files is an example of infrastructure as a service IAS, yes or no? And in my opinion, the correct answer is no. And the reason why I say that Azure Files is not an example of infrastructure as a service is this documentation from Microsoft. Here you can see that it says that Azure Files offers fully managed file shares in the cloud that are accessible via industry standard server message block protocol, network file system protocol and Azure Files REST API. The most important keyword in this documentation is that Azure Files offers fully managed file shares. So whenever a service is fully managed, it cannot be categorized as infrastructure as a service. For example, you take the example of virtual machine. Virtual machines are categorized as infrastructure as a service because they are not fully managed. When you spin a virtual machine, you have to take care of all the aspects of the virtual machine. So basically you manage all the settings, even the spinning of virtual machine. But on the other hand, in Azure files, you do not manage any infrastructure. That's why they cannot be infrastructure as a service. So that's why in my opinion, Azure Files is not infrastructure as a service, but I would like to hear if you contradict the same. What are your reasoning for picking Azure Files as infrastructure as a service? Now let's continue with the next question. Question number 402. It says a DNS server that runs on an Azure virtual machine is an example of platform as a service or pass. Yes or no? And the correct answer is no. And this is because of the presence of Azure Virtual Machines. I just mentioned whenever it's Azure Virtual Machines, it's always infrastructure as a service. Moving on to the question number 403, it says that if you have Azure resources deployed to every region, you can implement availability zones in all the regions. Yes or no? And the correct answer for this question is no. And this is because not every region has multiple availability zone. Some regions may have only one availability zone. That's why you cannot implement availability zones in all the regions. And now comes question number 404. It says only virtual machines that run on Windows servers can be created in availability zones. Yes or no? And the correct answer is no. And this is because regions that support availability zones also support Linux virtual machines. Now quickly moving to the question number 405. It says availability zones are used to replicate data and applications to multiple regions. Yes or no? And the correct answer is no. And the reason is that availability zones is a high availability offering that protects your application and data from data centers failure. Availability zones are unique physical location within an Azure region. Please note this underlined text my friends. It says within an Azure region and not in multiple regions. That's why the correct answer is no. And further the documentation tells you that each zone is made up of one or more data centers equipped with independent power, cooling and networking. And we have discussed this concept in a lot more details in our Azure Fundamental series. So in case you are interested to know this very important Azure concept, this is the video that you should watch to get all the details. And here comes question number 406. It says data that is stored in an Azure storage account automatically has at least three copies. 
yes or no and this one my friends is a true statement so basically there are different replication options available within an azure storage account the minimum replication option is locally redundant storage which is lrs and within lrs the data is replicated synchronously three times within the primary region so the documentation is telling you that even with the minimum replication option which is lrs you still have three copies of the data and now comes question number 407 and here i will tell you a very important azure concept so please listen to this question very carefully it says that all the data that is copied to an azure storage account is backed up automatically to another azure data center yes or no and the correct answer for this question is no and friends it's very very important to understand the differences between replication options and data backup both are completely different things but many people still get confused in both of these so let me give you more details on this it says that data is not backed up automatically to another azure data center although it can be depending upon the replication option configured for the account and it's very important to understand that these replication options are not same as backup backup involves creating a separate copy of the data typically to a different storage system and maintaining multiple versions over the time to protect against data loss corruption or deletion and please note azure provides various backup solution for protecting your data such as azure backup azure site recovery and azure vm backup so please do not get confused between backup of the data and data replication both of these concepts sounds to be different names for the same concept but in reality both are very different concepts but for now let's move on to the question number 408 it says an azure storage account can contain up to two terabyte of data and up to one million files yes or no and the correct answer is no and the reason is that limits are much higher than that Please mind the question, it says up to 2 terabyte, which seems to be the maximum limits set by the question. But this is not the case. The current storage limit is up to 2 petabyte for US and Europe and 500 terabyte for all the other regions, including UK with no limits on the number of files. So you can see the current limits are much, much higher than what mentioned in the question. So that's why no is the correct answer. And now comes our next question but in the next question before i ask any question i have one statement for you and based on this statement we will take the next two questions so let's first read the statement it says that you plan to deploy a critical line of business application to azure the application will run on an azure virtual machine and you need to recommend a deployment solution for the application the solution must provide a guaranteed availability of 99.99 percent and based on this statement here comes the question number 409 it says what is the minimum number of virtual machine you should recommend for the deployment and your options are one two three or five and the correct answer for this question is two so bare minimum you should have two virtual machines in order to provide a guaranteed availability of 99.99 percent moving on to the next question question number 410 it says what is the minimum number of availability zones you should recommend for the deployment the options are zero one two and three and the correct answer once again is two so in a nutshell what we are saying is that overall solution in order to provide the availability of 99.99 percent you should always have minimum of two virtual machine and these virtual machines should spread across two availability zones only then you can guarantee availability of 99.99 percent and here comes question number 411 it says all the azure resources deployed to a resource group must use the same azure region yes or no and the answer is no the reason is that azure resources deployed to a single resource group can be in different regions the resource group only contains the metadata about the resources it contains there is no restriction of having same location for the resources as that of resource group so what this essentially means is that you can have resource group in one different region and you can have resources inside this resource group from another different regions and here comes question number 412 it says that if you assign a tag to a resource group all the azure resources 
in that resource group are assigned to the same tag yes or no and the correct answer for this question is no the reason is that tags are not inherited by default now the next obvious question that should come to your mind is there anything that is inherited by default let's find out in the next question and here comes question number 413 it says that if you assign permissions for a user to manage a resource group the user can manage all the azure resources in that resource group yes or no and the correct answer this time is yes and the reason is that permissions set at resource group level are inherited by the resources in that resource group so keep in mind once again i'm telling tags are not inherited from resource group to the resources but permissions are inherited by the resources inside a resource group let's quickly jump to the question number 414 it says availability zones can be implemented in all the azure regions yes or no and the correct answer is no we just read few questions back that not all azure regions support availability zones so that's why no is the correct answer moving on with the question number 415 it says only virtual machines that run on windows server can be created in availability zones yes or no and yes of course this is an incorrect statement and now comes question number 415 it says only virtual machines that runs on windows servers can be created in availability zones yes or no and most surely the answer is no and this is because azure definitely supports linux as well quickly jumping up to the question number 416 it says availability zones are used to replicate data and applications to multiple regions yes or no and the correct answer is no and we just read this concept a few questions back that availability zones are unique physical locations within a single azure region and not multiple regions that's why correct answer is no and here comes question number 417 it says that you can use azure policy to download published audit reports and how microsoft builds and operates its cloud services yes or no and the correct answer is no so basically my friends azure policy is not used to download the published audit reports by microsoft or to understand how microsoft builds and operates its cloud services azure policy is completely different concept and we have done a lot of question on azure policy in the previous parts coming up next is question number 418 it says that you can use service trust portal to download the published audit reports and how microsoft builds and operates its cloud services yes or no and this time this is a correct statement and see friends in case you really get confused in all these policies and trust portals and whatnot always try to make relationship between these two things for example it says published audit reports and how microsoft builds and operates its cloud services so basically microsoft is trying to promote transparency on how it operates and what transparency brings it brings a certain level of trust and that's why service trust portal i hope this quick tip will really help you in your exams and now coming up to the next question question number 419 it says authentication confirms the identity of a person who wants access yes or no and this time it's a correct statement so authentication is used to confirm the identity of a person who wants access and there is a related concept to authentication and that is authorization let's understand what is authorization in the next question so here comes question number 420 it says authorization grants the proper access to a legitimate user yes or no and this time once again it's a correct statement so authorization is used to grant proper access to a legitimate user and further it tells you that authorization is the process of establishing what level of access a legitimate user or the service should have so let me quickly summarize it for you and make the distinction between authorization and authentication clear so authentication let's say that you log into a website now the authentication will check whether you have access to login or not so in case you are a legitimate user then it will let you in and that's the authentication process but on the other hand authorization once you are in the website or in the application the authorization will decide whether you are admin or a normal user or a guest user so the level of authorization or level of work or access that you can do inside the website or any application that is decided by authorization i hope this makes the distinction between authentication and authorization clear to you 
and now comes the section which you all have been waiting so far this is the questions that you have to answer in order to get the pdf file containing all the questions from part 21 and 22 so you have to tell me the correct answers for the question number 381 387 400 from part 21 and then 403 411 and 420 from part 22 you can send in your answers in the comment section below or email us at connect us at the rate the tech blackboard.com i hope you like this video where i try to explain a lot of azure concepts with yes and no kind of question if yes then please it's my humble request please do not leave the video without liking it because that's the only way the video spreads and reach to the new viewers and in case you are new here today please do not miss to subscribe the channel there is a lot of quality content on all azure certifications on this channel and that's all for today i will see you in the next video till then stay fit keep learning and thanks for watching if this video has added any value in your learning a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.